Fifth minute exactly. winner, isn't it? Beautiful. Brings Beautiful. back a few memories, I'm sure. Beautiful. <laughs> uh, from a Chelsea perspective, what did you make of that performance this evening? Um, it was indifferent. You know, we're used to seeing Chelsea wipe the floor with teams the last six months. They looked a little bit bitty. I think Thomas Tuchel, when he, when he alluded to it in the last game, Man City, when he, he talked about Kai Havertz being a little bit out of form. I think you saw that with the chances he missed. I don't read too much into the fact that there's only one shot on chances because there was some decent... Mm. One shot on goal, sorry. There was some decent chances. I think it's a, it's a, it's not certainly not a crisis. I think it's a little bump in the road. I think the game at the weekend takes on a huge importance now. Big teams don't go and get beat three times in a row. Yeah. So Chelsea need to get a result. Southampton at the weekend. At the weekend. They've yeah. got a nice run of fixtures actually. Yeah. Um, just a quick reminder that we're um, bringing you at 10:30 this evening the Champions League highlight show. Champions League tonight. We'll show you every single goal from across Europe this evening and we've shown you the winner at Man United. There's also a huge game happening elsewhere this evening uh, involving Barcelona. The result was unbelievable. Stick around from 10.30. We will show you all the goals from the evening and that's Champions League tonight from 10.30. As well as that, Tyson Fury is returning to the ring on Saturday the 9th of October. The trilogy showdown with Deontay. We'll take a look back then at this evening. and I think we should just get straight into the goal. How frustrating is it as a player when you're a few seconds into either the first or second half and you concede? Well, I think Chelsea was still in the dressing room. Um, you, you see the build-up to the goal. First contact, they didn't win it. Second contact, they didn't win it. And then it leads it, you straight into the box. And Chiesa, who was a threat all night, has a great finish. You see here, first contact. Second contact, where are we? Chelsea is still in the, in the, in the dressing room. I love this finish from Chiesa there because most strikers go across the goal and the keeper saves it. He knows go, to go high into the roof. High yeah. into the roof of the net. Such a clever finish. For Chiesa, and as I said, he's been a threat all game, but that's just a lack of con concentration from Chelsea. It's unacceptable 11 seconds into the second half to, to concede like that. Is that what it is? Lack of concentration? Yeah, I'd say so. I think Joe hit the nail on the head before, uh, uh, when the goal went in. Like, where are they? What are they doing? And that Tuka will be, I'm, I'm sure, he'll be addressing that in the change room, won't he? Mm. It's interesting to know because. Chelsea had a particularly indifferent first half, so you'd think the first thing they'd do is to be on it. Mm. You know, and to, to concede a goal like that, uh, the, that manager would be pulling his hair out. What he's got left of it. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Thomas. Look, you spent a couple of years playing out in Juventus, and as the full-time whistle went, I saw you very quietly under your breath, you just went, that's a huge win for you. Oh, and that, that is a really important point, actually. This is a season-defining game for them after their struggles early on. Yeah, the context of it. I mean, they've really struggled. This is a team that's 10th in the, in the league right now in Serie A, 10 points off the top. They needed something. Um, they've, they've scraped through a few of their last games in the league. They've won a few games, but this is a big win. This is a big win for the confidence of the team, for Allegri as well as manager. They had a lot of players out today. Um, you know, so it's a big win, clean sheet as well. You know, we spoke a lot about that tonight. So big win for, for defensively, but also for the confidence of the group. Yeah, do you know what? For, for, for clubs like Juventus, wins like this are like, almost like healing. You know, because mm. you get, they're going for a sticky spell. They've you've lost Ronaldo, financial problems, and you have a big win against the European champions at home, and then you see them celebrate. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't be so surprised if the team that comes to Stamford Bridge in a few weeks' time is an even better outfit. It's a more difficult game than this one. This was such a big game for them. And what a talent Chiesa is, by the way. Oh, huge player. I mean, he was linked with a few clubs in England, and I'm sure they're, they're thinking, why didn't we get him? Because he's just a fantastic footballer. The intensity with which he plays with, we saw in the Euros, mm. he was the main goal threat for the, for the Italians who went on to win the, uh, the tournament. But it's his pace, his drive. Yeah, he does, probably doesn't make the right decision. He could probably lay that across the goal there for mm. um, Bernadeschi. But he's the one who's the threat, who's potent. He, he, he wants to run in behind. He's that modern-day striker. He can play anywhere across that front line, and he's as comfortable out wide as he is through the middle. And he just calls... He unnerves defenders with that pace, and he's direct. Uh, what I love about him is he's one of them strikers he can play left, forward, left, forward, right, through the middle, and he, he'll make something happen. But what the biggest attribute he's got, one of all of his natural ability, is he plays with a humility there. You know, he's, he's out wide, he's fussling, he's busted, like, like, like a young, like a, like a Suarez type character. He can make something out of nothing. So every club in Europe will want a slice of him when he becomes available. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I think losing Ronaldo, other forwards have to step up. And Chiesa, you know, like Rio said he was, he was immense for Italy in the summer. Whether it's Chiesa, whether it's Dybala who didn't play today, whether it's Murata, they all need to step up now because mm. this is a rebuilding job. But he showed today that he's ready to take that responsibility for Juventus. Well, let's talk about a striker at the other end of the pitch. Um, I just want to share this lovely little um, 
quote with you. Uh, this says, the people who judge us often find it harder to spot the small details that differentiate one defender from another. Take a sliding tackle that will catch the eye more than me shouting at a teammate to make an adjustment, but the shout is more important because it will help my teammate make a better decision. I can then avoid having to make the sliding tackle because I've alerted him to the danger. That was Bonucci talking to James Horncastle for an article that James produced. Mm. It's a great thing to read and then watch him this evening. Yeah, and, and that was one of the key battles for me. We mentioned it before the game about Benucci and uh, Romelu Lukaku. And they weren't ever too far away from each other. And here they are. I want to highlight them now. This was them most of the game together. And I just want you to keep an eye on Benucci and the distance that he keeps with, with uh, Romelu Lukaku. There, look, I mentioned before, making sure that you keep that distance. You can see it there. He's away from him. Don't get too tight. Don't let him roll you. The ball comes in. And what, when it gets into Lukaku, look, He's not trying to fight him. He's always saying to him there, you're not going to turn into me. I'm going to allow you to play the ball backwards. And if you are going to play the ball behind me, you're not going to turn. But if you're going to play it behind me, you're going to have to try an intricate back heel that has to be perfect. And invariably, they don't come off. It's difficult to do. And you see here, he's crouching low. He's looking to see, has a nibble, doesn't come off because it has to be perfect. And as I said, that's fantastic defending for me. He's not diving in. He's not jumping at things. This is a beautiful clip here. Let me just take it back slightly for you here. But watch here. There they are again. Again, partnered up again, looked like they were all game. Just watch the way that Bonucci creates a yard here. This is situation here where he is there, Lukaku, this is dreamland for him. Tight, feeling defender, all right? Watch here now when the ball, before the ball comes. Get off, give me that yard. Give me the yard, and now, watch him again. Sorry, watch um, Bonucci peering round the side, looking, just waiting to pounce. OK, what I, that's what I love. You've got to watch. You're trying to see where the ball is before the ball comes in. The ball doesn't, it doesn't eventually come, but he's there looking around, waiting, waiting for that moment and not being too tight and giving the licence to then to Lukaku to, to, to get the advantage. But he said before, Bonucci, you switch off for 10 seconds and in a game from, of 95 minutes, he will get a chance and he'll score Lukaku. He, he's devastating. Here, he gets it slightly wrong, only slightly. Look. He's upright. He's not down low. Look again. There's the two there, married up, the married couple. He's not down low, peering round the side of him. He's very upright, can't see the ball. The ball then eventually comes in. He's upright. By the time he, he looks, he has a little look here. I'll show you. Look, he tried goes. to push again to get distance yeah, and not done it. Look at him. He's not crouching. Yeah. That's the problem. He's not crouching. He hasn't separated himself. When you're that tight, look at the distance. It's not even a big difference. It's half a step. Because he's too close, Lukaku can feel him, and then all of a sudden he's in, he's in Lukaku land there. The only thing Lukaku gets wrong there is the actual finish. Mm. I actually think now, Rio, Lukaku all game has probably thought I haven't had an itch, and he's almost too excited there. He's like, right, I beat him, mm. and then he snatches at it. Mm. You know, as a forward, I feel like he, he just needs to be cool in that moment. Mm. Because in the Premier League, we've seen this season, Lukaku finishes that. I think because Bonucci was kind of in his head all game, he snatched at it and he's not taken that chance and been ice cool yeah. as we've seen him. When we talk about strikers, we often talk composure. But Bernucci, you have to have composure. There was occasions there where I would be panicking if I was Bernucci because <laughs> Chelsea had good, good possession and it, Lukaku put his arm out and, but he's just so composed in defence and he's like right, looking around and he nibbles at the right time. But again, that's how hard being a defender is, because you, you get it wrong for 10 seconds. Yeah, that's, the, that's, the, thing, that's the thing about being a defender. You can be perfect for 92 minutes. Yeah. 94, 95 minutes comes in extra time, and the striker gets half a glimmer of hope, yeah. and bang, your night's work's over. Do you know what the thing is as well? You've, all, you've got the pressure on yourself as a defender. I was telling Rio, I said, when I used to play wide and I used to play against a fullback, you'd never get a foul given against you. I'd often go up and then... And then bang the, the thought before I made my movement and he'll give you a yard. Mm. You never get a foul. If Bonucci puts his arm on Lukaku in the box at the wrong time, foul. it's a penalty. So mm. you're playing with that pressure all the time, mm. especially if you're playing against Lukaku or someone with that quality. I also think that's experience. Bonucci and L Lukaku would have played against each other so many times and Bonucci knows exactly how to play against him. So you see in there a matchup that's happened over and over again and in a way, you know, Bonucci mm. has almost played the perfect game there. But again, Lukaku finishes that chance, you know, he, yeah. he, he wins the battle in a, in a way. And that feeling when the whistle goes and you've kept your man quiet? Clean sheet. Oh, beautiful feeling. <laughs> <laughs> right, thank you very much for now. Okay, we're going to take a very quick break and when we come back we're going to be talking and discussing and hearing from...
Thomas Tuchel. A tricky night for him. Get his post-match thoughts next. <laughs>